Hello. In this video, we are going to quickly explain how to use Gephi for modularity analysis as introduced in our previous videos. In particular, we are going again to focus on the example that was used in our presentation. As you probably remember, we had this network in which we showed that we had generally four communities originally identified. So let us now return back to Gephi and see how this analysis can be performed. So I again suggest you that you open the examples that are provided with the course resources and import example two now into Gephi. So let us do that. Open example two, open. Again, I suggest that you use undirected network as also done in the previous video when we used example one and continue experimenting with this. So I would not change anything farther here and just say OK. So our network is now again uh, loaded. Uh, in the previous uh, presentation we already introduced the ways how you can visualize, how you can uh, play, apply many different uh, layouts. So we can also try to see how some of these different layouts can be applied here. We can also see that we can see again similar community except that this visualization for some reason is not as good as it was in the previous case because these disconnected nodes that we had in the previous example were not shown effectively. And if you remember some of those nodes are uh, like Sean, like uh, Jan and Mia, which were also disconnected. So now to perform uh, modularity analysis, again we go into the statistics and all we need to do is to say modularity. When we uh, have modularity we then uh, select that this would be randomized and user weights and then the question is, well, how we get the lower number of communities? In general, for this example and many other examples that you will see throughout the study, this uh, parameter setting in many cases is really an art rather than there is something fixed. So in many cases you really need to tune this parameter before you reach a desirable number of communities. And that question becomes, what's a desirable number of communities? Well, in many cases it is really the number of communities or those communities that can be interpreted. So for example, when you are going to investigate some of these communities which were downloaded from Twitter from the CCK11 course that is also available in our data set, you will see that there are potentially many different reasons why those communities could emerge. Also the paper that is appended uh, as a description of that data set and describe one potential study will also provide you that there could be different various reasons. In many cases that's due to the different interests of different communities. So as I said that basically means that this resolution factor is in many cases something that you need to experiment with until to the point that you reach something that is desirable. Okay so let's now uh, perform this analysis and you can see in this case that we identify four different communities. I think that's the exact same type of or the number of communities we identified in our presentation. As you can see here as well in the diagram we had those four communities. So let us now test this hypothesis that I said like whether we had those identical four communities. So let us first go back and see what we may have here. So I'm suggesting you to go again to this ranking phase uh, and then now select visualization. So now there is one possibility that we can do is when we once we select this parameter modularity class we can then once we apply it we can see that different elements in this network are actually represented based on the colors. However, this representation may not be ideal because we are seeing that that's pretty much the same color except that it is having slightly different darkness or lightness of the same color. So if we go into this other component which is called uh, partition and then you will see there is nothing presently in this drop down box so if you refresh it here you will see that our modularity class is loaded. So now you can see something which is quite meaningful, some colors and they are actually representing different clusters that we identify. Once we have applied those, we can see that clusters or the nodes of your network, 
that are members of the same cluster are colored with the same color. So for example, green color is a cluster where we have Emma, Liz, Shane, Jill, uh, Leah and others. Mia has this uh, specific color here, purple one, and then we can also see this red color and also this uh, blue color. So in this way we perform uh, network analysis and we can also see that we perform also modularity analysis. For this modularity analysis as well, as we did last time, we can also select in the laboratory uh, and then we can go into the data laboratory and see this node which was selected and we can then again easier figure out which nodes are belonging to a particular module or which nodes are belonging to a particular cluster or community that is of our interest. However, as you remember as well that there are some disconnected nodes and given the small number of nodes in this whole example we can also see that there doesn't make sense really to have Mia just as a separate community. Being alone doesn't really mean that you have a community or even just a couple of nodes being by themselves doesn't make sense to be a part of a community. Even as we said we are really interested in a network as a whole and we are interested for example what is the flow of information which may happen throughout the entire network. In this case if some nodes are disconnected from anybody else that typically means that there is no information flow that is happening uh, between those disconnected nodes or small islands and the rest of the big network. So as we also introduced in the presentation we are interested to filter out all those disconnected nodes and identify the giant component of our network. So for that we can use filters. As you can see here there is this filter on the right hand side of your screen and then we can identify something which is called here topology. So when we identify topology we can see that one of these topology filters is called giant component. And giant component is just enough to be dragged here and then all we need to do is we need to filter. Just to uh, uh, press this button filter and you will see immediately here that the values of nodes and edges uh, reduced. That is to say that now we have only 81 0.25% of the visible nodes and again also here we have another different number of uh, edges. Once that is uh, finished we are again returning back to the statistics and now we are again performing uh, modularity analysis to see what results we are going to get. As you can see here in this report we immediately see that we got two communities and we again can reflect well those are communities exactly like we had before uh, in our presentation as we could also see in our uh, video that I introduced just uh, before these videos about Gephi. So let us now see again what is shown here. We can again see that they are colored. Of course in some cases you may want to just simply refresh this and again uh, select uh, the communities and reapply. Obviously if you are interested in different types of colors you can then open and select potentially some other color uh, that can represent some of these uh, uh, communities that you are interested in. In this case we have a relatively small example and a very small network so in this case representation and visualization is not uh, difficult uh, and doesn't require much time or different coloring effort. However, once you start working on the assignment that is provided in the data sets that are offered in our course resources, you will see that there are some much bigger networks like the network about the CCK MOOC that was offered long time ago and the Twitter data that we collected from it. Once, we, once you import that network you will see that there are many more nodes. I think we're close to 1000 of nodes that are available there and once you start performing modularity analysis first of all you will find quite handy to perform this giant component filter and secondly you can also find quite handy to perform um, these other types of uh, analysis or modularity analysis and especially these types of visualization so that you can see what are those different types of communities. With this, we finished the brief introduction of Gaffey. 
In addition to this presentation of Gephi that I just introduced here, I encourage you to have a look at additional video resources that are recommended about Gephi that other researchers and individuals on YouTube posted. I think they also have offer many interesting insights. Uh, and in addition to that, I would now encourage you to perform by yourself these exercises and these hands-on activities about the examples that we had in our videos and then move on onto the bigger example that we had uh, to perform modularity analysis on the CCK dataset, but you may also be interested to perform similar types of analysis on your Twitter and your Facebook networks. So. I look forward to learning about your experience and seeing some of your activities on the social media and uh, uh, edX discussion forum. Thanks much for your attention.